you've made a big mistake. You're listening to Bloodfest, the podcast. There's no escape. Strap in, children. Things are going to get gooey. Hello, and welcome to Bloodfest, the podcast. I'm your host, Nate. Y'all know me, know what I do for a living. I'm joined tonight here in studio by Joey. Joey, how's it going tonight? I am doing wonderful. That's... Care to elucidate? What? Say more. No, I'm doing did you say, do you care to hallucinate? No, <laughs> no, I elucidate. Said. Elucidate. I think you what said hallucinate. I said elucidate. And then Joey just eats a mushroom and he's like, fuck yeah. And yeah, damn right. <laughs> Give me some of that psilocybin. It's going to be legal in uh, Colorado, I think. Yeah. So, also, I'm joined by Josh. Josh, how are things in the faraway city of Kansas? I don't know. I've been inside all day. I went outside to go to the store, and it was 27 degrees outside. But it's what? 108 degrees in my soul. What well, on a it's, it's, because of all of the, it's because of all of the brimstone in there is what it is. Exactly. Oh. All right, and last but not least, the the host with the most, Casey. How's yeah, it I don't think so. Um, I'm better now that you're all here. <laughs> I'm excited. What? what you didn't you didn't like just like hanging out and waiting for an hour? It's not your thing. No, because personally, not really. personally, it does something for me. It gets me a little emotionally erect. <laughs> okay. All right. If you say so. Works. All right. All right. So, if you've been following the show, and if you follow us on the social media, you know that we plan to talk about a couple of movies tonight. The first one is a little sleaze fest called Thanks Killing. And honestly, this was, Joey, this was your idea, right? Thanks Killing? You were the one? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it's a fun movie. I watch it every year mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in November, obviously. I enjoyed it more than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You son of a bitch. (laughs) You son of a bitch. You made me watch this movie. (laughs) So before we get into talking about it, I want to, we know Joey loves it. I want to see which among you is as insane. So Josh, how do you feel about this movie? I think it's great. And I am not being sarcastic. (laughs) I watch this movie every year, just like Joey does. Sometimes we get on live and just watch it together. That's insane. What the hell? (laughs) Casey, Casey, tell me that you've got my back. So I I actually screwed up and I watched Jim Henson's Turkey Hollow. Uh, (laughs) Somehow somehow I got got turned around and I don't know. No, not not really. Um, I... I semi washed it as I normally do because it's really hard to pay attention to because it's yeah. pretty shitty. Yeah, it's pretty much um, impossible. I I do like the scene where he rips off the the dad's face and is wearing it, and the kids are just like talking to him and just think it's her dad. Yeah, I thought that, yeah. Was, that was that was hilarious. Yeah. I got yeah, clearly a turkey wearing human skin held on with a string <laughs> and and talking nothing like her father. And they all just act like, yeah, that's her dad, the sheriff. We all know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I he's mean, two feet I mean, off the I, ground. I, I think it's. I mean, it, it's such a such a silly movie. It's it's beyond. It's, it's supposed to be. I mean, it's, they knew they were making a shitty movie. I mean, when they I show mean, up at the house and the turkey answers the door with the dad's face on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, even, so it's painful. They don't even realize. It's, it's goddamn like, painful. Oh, okay, but this movie opens in, like, 1681 or something, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's a pilgrim girl running through the forest, but her shirt is, is torn open, and her large boobs are bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And then she's attacked and killed by a turkey. Why is she topless? For what reason? Anybody? I don't know. I was thankful for it. Yeah, to so attract more viewers, I guess. I guess so. I guess That's really so. The yeah. Only reason. Yeah. Give them some boobs at the start, and they'll set through. So this movie is sixty minutes. Uh, what twenty five minutes of it is padding and and just stretching it out for no reason. It it actually fast forwards itself at one point, 
and yet it's still the longest movie I've ever seen. It really is. <laughs> so in our group chat on this, you guys, specifically Josh and Joey, you fuckers, um, were excited to watch this movie because you said <laughs> it was a movie that I would not be able to find some some deep philosophical meaning in or be able to come up with some interesting literary, literary analysis or anything. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I took that personally. I genuinely did. I saw I It's like you, you fuckers threw down a gauntlet, so then I had to do it. And for 40 minutes of this movie, I was just thinking, well, fuck, they're going to win. I cannot do it. There is nothing in this. And then we got to Joey's favorite scene, the mask face. And I was like, well, fuck, I got it. I know what this is. So, do you guys have any problem with me doing a quick dive on what I think this movie is actually about? Nope, not at all. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. <laughs> okay, so be interesting. GWF Hegel famously said that all historical events and personages appear twice. And in his book, The 18th Brumaire of Louis Bonaparte, um, Karl Marx added that they appear the first time as tragedy and the second time as farce. And that really, honestly, kind of kind of ties in with how I saw this movie, because the first time I watched it, it was tragic to do so. But I had to watch it a second time once I realized what I was thinking about it. And doing it again is, quite frankly, farcical. But that brings us to Marx. So in Das Kapital, Marx discusses what he calls character masks. So these are masks, not physical masks, but psychological masks or, or personas that we wear in order to fit our space in society, in order to do the things that we have to do. Now, Marx is talking specifically about um, the functions of capitalism. So the shopkeeper must behave as a shopkeeper or else people won't treat him live. Oh, Hold on, our live has been, uh, was suspended for violating bullying and harassment policy. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Anymore. Yep, <laughs> bullying and harassment. So apparently, I can't call you guys uh, bastards or something. So, okay, we're not live on TikTok anymore. All right, anyway, the shopkeeper, the shopkeeper has to act as the shopkeeper or else the, the customer's won't treat him as such. We all have to play our roles to take part in society. And this doesn't apply simply to uh, the, the spaces of capitalism. It, it aspires, it, it, it involves all societal functions and spaces. So when you watch this movie, every single character is a cliched and worn out trope. So you've got the jock, the party guy, the slut, the good girl, the nerd, right? So these these are all tropes that you've seen over and over and over again in movies and, and in books and on television. And they exist in shallow movies like this, partially because it's easy, but also because they kind of do exist in the real world. I would say that you could look at these college kids in Thanksgiving, and you could see a strong correlation between them and the high school kids in the movie The Breakfast Club. And I think it's notable that there are a lot of teenagers over the years who have honestly seen themselves reflected and represented in, in John Hughes' Treakley output, right? Which suggests to me that we at least on some level believe ourselves to be some form of those tropes. We, we act out those roles, right? And you guys with me so far? Yeah. Josh? Yep, right all on, over. Right on. All right. Absolutely. All right. So I, I think it's probably too obvious to say that, that no person is simply and completely the jock or the slut or the nerd or what have you. No one is really those categories. We're a form of it, a version of it. Um, Joey's a slut. Yeah, <laughs> Joey is. Much. Yeah, Joey is a slut. So maybe, yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, I'm obviously the jock, so there is that. <laughs> but I was going to say that we don't, people, e even, even kids, um, they don't go in those groups that easily. You know, we're more complicated. As, as Michael Blumline said, um, humans are, aren't, aren't all as, aren't, how do you put it? Aren't all so simple as the brains of rats, which honestly might be, that's okay. I don't want to get off on that. Um, 
we exist more in liminal spaces. We don't go in one line on the spreadsheet. We're spread across many lines, right? But we play the roles. Or if we're not playing those roles, we're playing a reaction to those roles. So if you think back when you were in high school, you know, think of the, the stoner or the punk, the, the people demanding that they're unique. They're not one of the tropes. But the stoner is really just another mask, and he has to wear it to fit in his place in society, right? So yep. there's really no difference between the jock, the stoner, what have you. Well, in this movie, I think it's interesting that the turkey isn't even a turkey. The turkey's a mask being worn by a spirit who is summoned by indigenous people to extract vengeance on the colonizers. So the Europeans came to this continent um, and committed genocide. And the conceit of this movie is that an indigenous holy man raises a spirit up that will come back every 505 years for some reason. That never makes much sense to me in order to exact vengeance. It, so I think that the, the point on that is driven even more firmly and dumbly home when the mask of the turkey dawns. The mask that is the turkey dons a mask that is human flesh from the sheriff's face that we've all, all talked about here. And watching the movie, it seems hilarious to all of us that this is a fucking turkey walking around wearing, wearing a man's face like, like leather face. Um, <clears throat> and everybody just seems like they don't notice, right? They all think this turkey is the girl's dad. They yeah. all talk to it like it's the dad. None of them have even an inkling that that's a fucking turkey. All right. But what I would like to posit is that they don't see it because it's no different from the masks that they're all wearing already. Um, so the turkey has been serving, wearing the, all right, sounds stupid. The spirit has been wearing its turkey mask in order to be the avenging spirit, right? And now, as part of that masking, it simply wears a second level of mask, which is something that Marx talks about. He talks about in Das Kapital how the shopkeeper may need to wear the shopkeeper mask at work, but he wears a different mask when he goes out of, of, among his friends and his peers, and perhaps you have masks upon masks, and people have layers within, in them. So I think that the ending of this film hints that it doesn't have to be exactly like that. So Nietzsche, in The Gay Science, notes that in America, one can play any role. In fact, one can even forget that they're playing a role and they can think this is their real life. They can choose their own mask. Um, as an American, I have to tell you, I choose masks all the time. So we understand this best when we see at the end of the film that the turkey is not truly dead, but instead it's back. It's wearing a new mask. Instead of the crude hand puppet that, is, that we've seen throughout, he's now embodied a real, if, if dead, gutted, and cooked turkey, yet still able to, to fulfill his role as an Avenger. And I think that drives home that we don't have to wear the masks society demands of us we can choose our own masks. And I think that's what Thanksgiving Killing is trying to say to the audience. It's trying to teach the proletariat that we can rip off the masks that capitalism and that society has given us. And we can come together on, on the holiday of Thanksgiving in order to choose who we will be and to choose what our society will be. What do you think? I think you're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think the the filmmakers of this movie were were that deep. But... You don't. You don't think they were reading *Das Kapital*? Or, no, or probably not. The 18th I, I have Humer a question of, and a statement. Louis Bonaparte. What? The question is: Do your arms hurt from stretching so fucking far? <laughs> <laughs> And my statement is, you've ruined this goddamn movie for me forever. Good, good, good. I'm still going to watch it every year, but I'm going to think every single time about how fucked you are. You guys challenged me. You yeah, challenged no, you, me. you definitely you rose, rose to the, the challenge. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I yeah. hate this movie so much.
so much. It's, do you know that there's actually a sequel, Things Killing 3? They skipped part two. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Which I An saw, hour and 39 minutes. I, so watched, even longer. I watched it one time, and it, it was absolutely just horrendous. Don't. And the first one's not? Yeah. I, I, I enjoy the first one, but the, the, the third one just, it sucked. It was so bad. Okay, so tell us why. What was wrong? What was it missing? <laughs> Did it have boobs? No. Yeah. It was what? missing the I, Dead Bro song or whatever. Know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I ended up turning it off. It was just so bad. It was basically like the plot from what I remember was that the turkey was in search of the missing sequel, part two. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. And that that's kind of what it revolved around. I think I got like 20 minutes into it. And I was just like... This, Done zapping. This, this is so bad. I, just, <laughs> I, I had to turn it off. It was so horrible. Was it who was it on SNL way back when that started to do? Uh, uh, he was going to review gay porn. Oh God! Do you remember that? Oh. It, was a, it was a thing on Weekend Update, and he goes, "So the Kevin movie Neal? started, and I was what? It might be, I think it was Kevin Neal. Yeah, the movie started, and honestly, I I didn't get it. I wasn't interested, and then I got interested, and I got really interested, and I was really interested." Then suddenly lost interest. <laughs> and about ten minutes later, I started to get interested again. All right, I don't, all right. I don't so, remember that. So you know, there, the movie overall is probably not the greatest. It's not the greatest well, but, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, I would, I would completely agree yeah. with that. Yeah, like there were some great scenes. Like it, it was <laughs> towards the very beginning when the sheriff and his wife were in the kitchen. And oh God. <laughs> coffee and he's like god damn Cheryl this coffee tastes like shit and she pulls up the coffee pot and she's like I took a shit in it oh god <laughs> like, oh. That, that, was, oh. That, that scene was like a what the fuck and then well uh, his reaction to that though is like oh and then he oh, okay. like, yeah. wipes his mouth and he's good and then yeah she's, she's like, like I want a divorce and he's yeah. like okay oh, okay and then, Why does he have a fake mustache? It, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> well, that's no point. What it's, the hell? It's so horrible. And then this is a little later on in the movie. Uh, I don't know the character's name, but the boyfriend and girlfriend are having sex, and Turkey oh pops up after he kills the boyfriend. Starts. So yeah, well, you've got to tell. No, so for the people listening, so she's on her hands and knees, and the boyfriend's behind her. So somehow she doesn't notice when the boyfriend's dead and replaced by the turkey initially, but raping her. You know, the best part is, is you know, still same scene, and the turkey gets off, and he's like, "You just got stuffed." <laughs> God. God. Oh, that's so bad. And, and, you know, obviously we talked about the turkey wearing his dad's face. And the the misogyny in this movie is off the rails, by the way. Those, to me, those were scenes that were just like, what the fuck made me laugh? Oh. oh. I mean, there was a lot to laugh at. The, the whole scene with the dead dead friend, and oh, he God. was singing that stupid song and reminiscing, and uh, oh, okay. so, it was pretty hilarious. So the nerd and the big party guy are best friends, right? And they go way back, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. But at the start of the movie... None of none of Party Guy's friends know Nerd. He's never introduced his best friend to anybody else that he hangs yeah, out. Yeah, that made zero sense. Yeah. <laughs> and then the uh, I don't remember which girl it was, but one of the girls that was near the end, I think that that was a chick that uh, that lit him on fire. Oh. Um, but she her her just the the delivery of her lines was she was like. Oh, we better run, you know, just stuff like yeah, that. It, yeah. was, it was hilarious. Oh, there was no acting in this. There was right. no acting in this. They were just saying their lines with like no inflection at okay. all. No. <laughs> okay, Josh. Josh, what do you what do you love about this fucking mess of a movie? Let's see. Well <laughs> boobs. Boobs. <laughs> boobs. Obviously. Definitely boobs. Obviously. Uh, yeah, Turkey just... sex. <laughs> you just got stuffed. Oh, God. That, that was just. Oh, oh. There, there's just some great lines in that. Like okay. That. Yeah. The, the turkey, Tons of one-liners. The turkey getting picked up as a hitchhiker. 
And the guy, <laughs> yeah. like a little rifle. The guy, the guy, gas, grass, or ass. And so my wife <laughs> saw a few minutes of this movie, and because every once in a while she'd take off her headphones because she was listening to music, and she'd take off her headphones and see a little bit and be like, nope, still no. <laughs> but at that point, she's like, what the fuck is that? Do people say that? And so I had to explain to her about Easy Riders magazine from the 70s and, and bikers. And what was that? Josh. Me. Okay. Two but hey, he gets in. <laughs> Took a big shit. And the dude wants to fuck in a coffee pot. A turkey. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh the, that whole movie is just completely idiotic. Well, okay, but th that scene, that's the only scene that actually made me laugh because <laughs> you expect the turkey to, like, bite his neck out or something, but he just pulls out a fucking gun. And it's a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> Where was he hiding a fucking rifle? Uh, and then he calls the turkey sir. He's like, oh, don't shoot me, <laughs> <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> uh, oh, God, it's, guys. It, it, is, it is funny. You got to give it that, I guess. It's good for a, a laugh. Oh, I, I so honestly, I, I, I it just kept going on and on and on, and they kept it kept ending too. Like, oh, good, it's dead. No, it's not. <laughs> well, like any good supernatural horror, I mean, you know, yeah. you you don't complain when Michael comes back. Well, no, but or Freddy, he, but they're scary, and and. Like, You've never been stuffed by a turkey. Oh, God. Yeah, you got stuffed by a turkey. Oh. You'd be scared. Okay, so you don't know that that's true. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, this just took a <laughs> twisted turn. Look, Jive Turkey. Are you trying to get us banned from YouTube as well? I don't, think, I don't know how that... You, what you did I say it, that so was bullying? It, yeah, that makes no sense. I don't you, know. You got banned from Facebook. Got us suspended on TikTok. <laughs> Are you going for YouTube now? I, I catch a Facebook ban like once a week now. He's on a roll. It's, it's like nothing I can say. They did TikTok is very strict. I don't know what to do, deal with them. Well, with their rules. It doesn't make any sense. I think it's because uh, most of their users are like very young. You know, there are a lot of little kids on there, like teenagers and stuff. So they yeah, feel like a, I, a need to protect, which makes right. Sense. Yeah, I guess when we got to talking about turkey sex and stuff, that probably wouldn't fly. Yeah, yeah, that's probably little kids. Bad. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to make little kids hear that. Right. Now you've got to be at least like fifteen before I force you to hear about turkey sex. So okay, so. The part <laughs> I want to hear. Nate, what would you rate this movie? So we're doing on a scale of one to five, right? Well, one to five. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do five. Okay, so on a numerical scale of whole numbers, real numbers, <laughs> counting numbers, from one to five, whatever would be the analog of absolute zero <laughs> would be what I would rate this movie. Mm. It's, it's below yeah. the scale an infinite amount. I would say it's a one. I mean, it's it's a bad movie, but but I laughed quite a bit, so it's got some some merit. What's our time? I can't see our time. It's seven thirty-five. No, no, the record minutes. time. <laughs> the record time, you bastard. Twenty-three minutes. Oh, okay, okay, mm. okay, okay. So, Josh, where do you rate this this abortion of a movie? Well, it's like like a serious movie, probably like a one or a two. But as far as like it entertains my stupid sick ass, <laughs> like a three and a half to a four. It's enough for wow. me to be able to watch it every year. It is fucking hilarious oh, and it's stupid. And I can, well, I haven't seen it since I stopped drinking. So maybe oh. I won't like it quite as much. <laughs> I used to get drunk as fuck and just giggle to this goddamn okay, I movie. Can... Actually, if I were still drinking, I could see that. Also, if like I had a lot of really good weed, I could see that. Well, here, here in uh, here in a while in Missouri, you might be able to get a bunch. That's true. That's true. Just drive right over the line. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm kind of in agreement with Josh. It, it's a stupid, silly movie, but it's very entertaining in the sense that I laugh my ass off. Yeah. I, I would give it a three and a half. I, I I found it very difficult to masturbate to. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's where you went wrong. <laughs> you didn't masturbate. 
You would have enjoyed it more. Anybody have, before we get on to what turns out to be an actual movie, anybody have anything they'd like to add about Thanks Killing? I highly recommend it. It's an enjoyable movie to watch every November. Exactly. Gets you in the mood for the season. For the seasoning. For the seasoning. Just grab a, cr- a can of cranberries and stick it up your ass and turn on the movie and go to town. God. <laughs> mm, no, I've got okay. nothing to add. We should definitely move on. Have you seen the video, speaking of the cranberry thing, have you seen the videos online where women just, uh, naked women just like sit on cake? No, I didn't no. know that's a thing. That sounds apparently, like it's ruining cake. No, appar- apparently it's a, a kink for some people, but all I can think is infections. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not yeah that's good. exactly what I first thought of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, cakes. Oh, yeah, cakes are, are yeasty, aren't they? Yeah, that's already yeah. yeast. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, then, moving on. So after these monsters made me watch Thanks Killing. You're welcome. They then offered up a second creature feature, Zombievers. And I'm just going to say right off the bat that I was a little disappointed because when I saw that name, Zombievers, I thought uh, it's going to be like like zombie strippers or zombie hookers, one of those types of deals. But no, it turns out it's actually large uh, semi-aquatic rodents with, with big sharp teeth and flat tails. So, not at all what I was expecting. Not at all. But I actually found this one to be pretty, pretty entertaining, guys. What do you, what, what do you guys think? Do you guys like this one? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It's definitely a lot better than Things Killing, I think. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a really just great movie. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. There was a lot of gore, a lot of brutal killings. Like, it, it's everything you would want. In a Including Bill Burr. Bill Burr's yes! in it. Yes! Oh, yeah. One the, of the opening of Bill Burr is fucking scene, hilarious. Like, the yeah. Scene was just... Well, that, that dialogue where he's talking about he dated a man one time. Best week of his life, except for the sex. That was brutal. <laughs> not, not the penis, it was the whiskers. Just, just can't get past that. Yeah, Bill, Bill Burr being in that movie alone. He, if you never listen to Bill Burr's comedy, he is just. So fun to listen to. He's become a, a big star. He wouldn't be in something like this these days. He's in Star Wars and stuff. Oh, really? I didn't... I, didn't. I, he was on I, the, I don't watch Star Wars. He was on The Mandalorian. Hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so that was different. Josh, what were, you, what were your thoughts on... Uh, were you a fan of the Zombiever? Well, there was no turkeys, so I was, I was a little disappointed. But <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of stuffing. There was a lot of stuffing. Oh, my God. So, for the folks at home, if you haven't seen Zombievers, and I didn't give you a spoiler warning on Thanks Killing because fuck that movie. Whoops. But, <laughs> Awful. But we will, we will be spoiling this movie. So the, the plot, such as it is, Bill Burr and his buddy are driving a truck hauling toxic waste, and uh, he's looking at his phone and hits a deer, causing a barrel of toxic waste to to fly off and go down into a pond and, and break open against a beaver dam. So then the beavers are infected with the toxic waste and they become ravenous zombie creatures that go out hunting everyone. There are three lovely young women who are coming to spend the weekend at a cabin there and then their boyfriends show up shortly later unexpectedly. Um, and the boyfriends are very interesting to me. I do not think I know these actors but if you put the three of them side by side, like in a row, it looks like each one of them is a a certain percentage of um, what's his name Brewer um, Jim Brewer Jim Brewer. So like one of them's face is seventy two percent Jim Brewer. The other one is forty eight percent Jim Brewer, and the third one is fifteen percent Jim Brewer. So someone is splitting him into his constituent parts. <laughs> the the uh, the zombie beavers uh, attack them, come after them in their cabin. There's lots of killing and, and such. Uh, we get we, we get a nice topless scene. Uh, the one girl decides to go swimming topless, which actually leads to one of my favorite gags. 
So they're all out there in their bikinis. She has no bikini top. They see a bear, and she instantly, when she sees the bear looking at them, covers her boobs. Like she's afraid the bear will yeah, see her breasts. I, I like, that la- yeah, that, that, like, that cracked me up. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, and then we find out, which this this might honestly be a little plot hole here. This doesn't seem like the type of movie that would have major holes in its plot and logic problems, but it, they might have a small one here because we have learned that this zombism comes from toxic waste, kind of like uh, Return of the Living Dead uh, with the trioxin gas that turns people into zombies. But then people are turned into zombies by being bitten by the beavers as if it were a virus more akin to a Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead or Dead Walking type zombie thing. And also, people who are bitten don't just turn into zombies. They turn into beaver zombies. They grow beaver teeth and beaver tails. Joey, for the people watching us on YouTube, do you have a clip of what becomes of these poor fuckers? Okay, uh, yeah. This, so this for those watching, this scene, you think you're about to see a, a little lesbian love scene, and it turns into this. This woman's teeth fall out and replaced by beaver teeth. She grows claws. Uh, big beaver tail. Um, it's honestly, it's it's a little weird. I think I might have a new kink now, guys. Um, yeah, saying. that was one of the best scenes in the movie. I thought it was pretty hilarious. So once it gets to that point, though, it becomes like genuinely brutal, right? Yeah, it does. Like full on yeah, zombie yeah, gore. I mean, once we get there, like even even when that one dude, I can't remember the character's name, when the one that got his foot cut off. Yeah, yeah. And then Smith, who was the hunter guy, yeah. that showed up when they were confronted with the bear the scene where he just uh, that's not it that's not the right scene where he just gets attacked it's like god it's just oh so... rips the face off yeah oh just... god oh yeah that is so ooey and gooey it's and then he comes so... back as a beaver with his face Brutal. missing oh but josh has a favorite scene in this uh, what's your favorite scene josh where that involves a uh, smith and the neighbor Oh yeah! Oh God! I know what you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, you just, that clip. Are, are you rolling it? I yeah. can't see what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's rolling. Say it, Josh. <laughs> uh, shit! I forgot. I, I've slept since then. So what was it Smith? He he goes in. So he goes upstairs. At this point, where they escape the cabin or house. There's the neighbor's the house. Neighbors, and he goes upstairs, and the wife is in the bedroom, dead. She got attacked. And Smith opens up the door, sees her on the bed dead, and just says, okay. And then oh, yeah. the door <laughs> yeah. and walks off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's good game. No, also, after the credits, they have like a little bit of outtakes. Yeah. Yes. And Loopers. there's one where he walks in and he goes, fuck this shit. Yeah. Or something just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. So, Which I like even more, but just the just the idea yeah. of it was great. Yeah, yeah. So I honestly, the acting in this is not bad. I mean, it's yeah. it's full on like sci-fi channel level acting. I'll give it credit for that. Uh, it's it's well written as a parody of a zombie film, but it really does get the full war level that you would want from a real zombie film. And and this is a spoiler, but you know, you only get. A very short time with Bill Burr at the beginning and yeah. the end. And this mm-hmm. is a spoiler alert, but at the end... We the, replay the, the same scene. The only yeah. surviving chick escapes, and now she's on a main road fleeing. And then this is what happens. She flags down the van with Bill Burr and the other dude. But Bill Burr's looking at his phone. Yeah, the dude's like, you see you see the girl in the road or something? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I see, see her. It. I trust you. Lambs right into her. Roll right credits. Her. Like, I laugh so fucking hard. At that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty like good. This poor girl just survived this, you know, this hor- horrific attack by these zombie beavers. I love that the beavers are blocking the roads. They're chewing down. They're chewing they're down trees in order to and cut <laughs> telephone lines. Yeah, cutting the, cutting the phone lines, <laughs> and and I love that the beavers seem to be as zombies much more intelligent 
than they were when they were regular <laughs> beavers. And and they they're having reactions to stuff. So no face guy and one of the beavers are cutting down a tree, chewing down a tree to stop the car, but they don't do it fast enough so it lands behind the vehicle. And then they look at each other and they give the, the, each other one of those eh, looks. <laughs> it's yeah, it, it's just I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was such a good movie. Yeah, I think the the reason the acting is good in this is because if you look at the the credits for these people, a, a lot of these actors have been in quite a few things. Like, yeah, they, I they, I, I recognize the boyfriend, but I wasn't quite sure from where that Jake Wary. Well, okay. there's multiple boyfriends, but one of those guys, um, he is from It Follows. So oh. he was the dude, and it follows who first gets infected and then passes okay. on the, okay. or not infected, but the, uh, whatever you call it. He's um, the one that has sex with the main character. Right, like right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and yeah, and then I've seen him in other things. Like, I've seen the Altitude. Um, he was in It Chapter 2, evidently. And then and then I recognized the the, the girl who, who showed her, I think that's the one who showed her boobs, the Courtney Palm, is that her? Um that sounds yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So she's been in quite a few things. In fact, she is in a movie that's in pre production called Beaver Shark. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Um, but uh, so she was in some things that I've seen. Um, I can't think of what it was off the top of my head. Uh, I've seen her in Disappearance, Dead Ant. I've seen that. Dead Ant. Uh, but yeah, I mean, but, but yeah, a lot of these these actors were, were in quite a few. Uh, film so that's why you know the acting was pretty good um, they have careers yeah yeah they're actual actors yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I, th I think the thanks killing that was probably like all those people's first movie or something i'm gonna assume that whoever was making thanks killing went down to uh the local the local place where they help heroin addicts and just rounded some people up yeah pretty much yeah yeah <laughs> um, so how how do you guys rate Zombievers? Oh, I I would definitely put that at about an eight out of five. An eight out of five? <laughs> oh, yeah. Jeez! Wow. I, I would put that at a four. Okay. It was such a great movie. It just went above five. So so yeah, it's up there with like the likes of Shawshank Redemption and stuff. Yeah, you think? Yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah, easily. Honestly, Shawshank's got some. Shawshank's got some work to do to catch up with zombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say it's probably a two. I mean, it's not a great movie, but it's it's good. It's good. Two two's good. I think on on my scale, one is complete crap, and then two is good. Um, so Josh. yeah, I'll give it. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with a four. Just kind of the same reason as as Thanks Killing, just because it was stupid and made me laugh a lot so i was just it, it'd be a little bit higher but like as an actual like movie movie it's it's two or three i just but love the fact that so you, entertaining you could tell obviously the beavers were just hand puppets yeah, yeah and yeah. it didn't take yeah, anything but, okay. away from me okay yeah. but here's the thing though here's the thing <laughs> those were quality puppets they were they, they were good quality good um, whereas the hand puppet and thanks killing looked like a fifth grader who had had a head injury made it I mean, what? what yeah. That, that's not it. What? That's not it. That's what that damn. Yeah, look, yeah. Look yeah. How incredible that. Yeah, those are good. Is. Those are good beaver puppets. I was, yeah. I was, yeah, it's good puppetry. See, so, yeah, I love Thanks Killing so much. I just keep pulling up the Thanks Killing the, scenes. So, as you like, should. So you guys watched the outtakes? Did you see the one with uh, the dog? Where they yeah, had, I don't the remember dog that in the one. Water, and, yeah, and they're like, he's supposed to be afraid of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, that guy threw the dog to his death. Right. To get yeah. So I mean, so honestly, yeah. Well, what I mean, an asshole. In that situation, you could, not, you know, do you put the dog before you and you die? And probably, I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's the correct answer. Yes. I mean, he, well, I definitely put it before that guy because in the 100%. movie you already hate him. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred so. percent. I feed him to the zombies. I mean, pretty much everybody ended up dying anyway. I mean, that yeah. chick the dog was the one that could have gotten away if they'd gotten to land first. But, you know, <laughs> that's uh, a you know that whole scene kind of reminded me a little bit of the uh, was it the first uh, story in Creepshow two 
where they went to the the lake. Oh, the raft, yeah, 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 the raft. Yeah, because that, that, yeah, it was yes. like the same, like a dock out there in that dirty lake, and yeah. and then when they were hurry up trying to swim back to shore, that that whole yeah. scene reminded me of that a little bit. And then also, like you mentioned, the Return of the Living Dead when you know Bill Burr runs into that deer at the beginning, yeah, uh, and then that that barrel falls out into the water. It's like Return of the Living Dead Part Two. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So my rating, I, I give it a strong two and a half. Honestly, it was it was uh, it was a lot of fun, and I I think there's a possibility that I would watch it again at some point. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, not, I, I would definitely. Yeah, I definitely. I would watch a sequel if they can't with a sequel. Yeah, I yeah, I might watch a I sequel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm kind of interested in watching that. Uh, what was it again? The shark. Beaver shark. Beaver shark. Yeah. What the hell even is that? <laughs> I, a great idea. <laughs> there's no, Beaver there's not too. even a plot listed, so who knows? It's got beavers. It's got sharks. It's got sharks with beavers. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, guys. Oh wait. Yeah. Okay. So, anyone else have anything they would like to add about the zombie beaver movie before we move on? I, I highly recommend it. It's a fun movie. It's I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, I recommend yeah. it. If you want to celebrate International Beaver Day on April 7th, oh. you could watch <laughs> Tom Beaver. Nice. Yeah, Nicely done. Yeah. Nice. Casey? I'm looking out for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have anything more to add. Just, yeah, I, I recommend it as well. All and right. I'll definitely rewatch it. All right. So let's get into what awesome stuff we're looking forward to, what we've seen this week, or what we're angry about. Josh, what have you seen or done this week that's cool? I actually have a visual this time. Oh my god. My you? call ends in 10 minutes. All right. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> oh, interesting. Anyway, I got Earth Girls Are Easy Yay! from Amazon. They were yeah. super on sale, so I had to get it. And yeah. then we all saw it last night and just laughed our asses yeah. off. It was so great. It's a lot better than I remember it. And I, I remember it being it awesome. So long. I haven't seen it in so long. That is such a good movie. So such real quick, movie. since we only have 10 minutes, I'm not going to be very long because Casey's bought almost the entire store of vintage stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. But this past week, if you've ever seen WNUF Halloween special, fun Yay. movie. But just got the sequel out there, Halloween Mega Tape Bundle, $100. Comes with the retro VHS, which looks like it's bootleg, DVD, and then just a catalog. But it's a fake catalog, it's just like fake, bootlegged, hard to find movies. But yeah, I watched this, I enjoyed it. Did you get out your VCR so you could watch the VHS? I got the VCR out, but I haven't watched it on okay. VHS. I just watched the DVD. Okay, okay. Yeah. Casey, what about you? So, uh, I've been uh, uh, catching up on The Walking Dead oh. uh, show. So, so I stopped watching it. You know, I've been watching it since the, it first started 12 years ago, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but I kind of dropped out about halfway through season 10. Um, so I've just been seeing a lot of posts on TikTok about the upcoming final episode, which drops on the 20th. So I figured I'd go ahead and uh, catch back up. And I'm glad I did because it's actually I'm back into it again. Uh, again. Um, I'm actually really, really liking the Negan character now because um, they definitely, uh, you know, he's definitely changed. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything if anybody hasn't even even caught up uh, to season 10, but but anyway, I'm I'm I've really been enjoying it. I'm completely caught up, and now I'm just waiting for the the final episode to drop on the twentieth. And then um, let me unblur my background here. I've been buying a few things recently, so I got I went ahead and bought some Criterion's. So I got Days and Confused, nice. Great movie. the the Virgin Suicides 4K, yeah. and then taking a chance on this. Uh, I think it's a Japanese film House. Uh, it looks completely nuts. Um, and then today I went to several places. So I picked up uh, the unbearable weight uh, of massive talent uh, steelbook from Best Buy. 
this was only, or actually, no, this was 20 bucks. So that was the most expensive thing I bought recently. Um, and then this one, Ghost Team 1, was from Dollar Tree. So is Prevenge. This is a really fun movie. Um, the Possession of Hannah Grace. That was eight bucks, brand new at Vintage Stock. Um, and then I got VHS 94 for $8, uh, new at Vintage Stock. Nice. Uh, love the Coopers. Awesome horror film. Um, definitely recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a really awesome Christmas movie. Uh, it's it's very, very sad. We watch it every year. Um, Zodiac, uh, two, direct, two disc director's cut. Uh, this was only 10 bucks. It looks like it's going for like 30 bucks on, on Amazon. So that's, wow. that's a good deal. Uh, free guy. I just picked this up because it was thirteen dollars. That's not bad. Um, I like. Yeah, that. it was the last last one they had, and then us was. And it's got this. See the the case? How shitty that looks. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like all veiny. I hate yeah. that. I think I think it, it's for moisture or something. But but anyway, this this dropped down to six ninety nine on Amazon. So I was like, yeah. hell yeah! So I grabbed it. Uh, and there were some other ones I got. The other day from uh, Dollar Tree as well, and I can't remember what they were, but, but yeah, I've been. These were these Criterion's were essentially free because I had like eighty eight dollars, uh, and and us was part of that order. I had eighty eight dollars in Amazon credit I, I used for that. Nice. Um, and then the rest of it was really only like sixty bucks, but Good now deal. I'm gonna probably I'm probably gonna wait for for Black Friday now just to see what. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome and Severn have on the on the horizon. I'm sure they're going to announce some some secret titles. So yeah, they're going to take all my money. Yeah, fuckers, we're probably, fuckers. We're probably running out of our ten minutes. Yeah, so let, yeah. Me, let me do the wrap up here, guys. So if you like what we're doing, follow us on Twitter at Bloodfest Pod, and you can find our website bloodfestpodcast.com be sure to give us a five star review or rating, tell your friends share us out on your on your social media apps, get a tattoo across your forehead with our name uh, until next time, I've been Nate we've got Joey, Josh, and Casey plus Joey's cat bear is right over there off screen that's it guys we're out we're out